Good evening, Facebook and Instagram Live. Hello, everyone. We are joining our next version of Conversations with the Boys and um, are excited after a long day. I don't know what the weather conditions are where you are, but it is one of those days where you really wanted to come home and get in the bed and have a bowl of soup or something and just retire for the day. So really not um, at 100% relative to the weather conditions, but nonetheless, thanking God for another day to just be alive and have the ability to share and um, hopefully engage you all in our next version of Conversations with the Boyds, where we are um, talking about Black love. This is actually part two of Black Love Conversation. And with Valentine's Day being this coming Friday and with um, the end of power um, culminating last week with um, some revelations around relationships and um, was joking with one of my good friends about Tasha and um, uh, Ghost's relationship and the importance of um, that relationship um, and, and the impact on our culture and community, actually, um, you know, just from a how we view that relationship. So um, want to use that as part of our context for tonight. Um, but really want to focus on, you know, just some fun things about relationships or some realistic things about relationships that help us to manage what we call black love and um, setting the stage for the discussion, of course, um, we know under God's law and rule and uh, establishment of love, love has no color. So, you know, love is, is not anything that um, we fashion by a color or culture, but God wants us to love one another. And the scripture for tonight, um, our discussion um, is centered around John 13, John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. And we'll jump into that after prayer. But again, um, even though the title is Black Love, because we are in a culturally uh, and racially Black love relationship and marriage, um, you, under God's law and rule, love has no color, no boundaries, and no limitations. So we want to make sure that we're very clear that we follow God's law, rule, and establishment of what love truly is. And... Um, use the context of black love to discuss how that impacts our relationship. So I'll open us up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day, Lord, and we just thank you for being blessed with the gift of life, not taking any moment or any part of that gift for granted, but just truly giving back to you as always, each day that you give us uh, in stewardship and surrender and in service to fulfill your will for our lives, for the building of your kingdom. And we just thank you for being able to be used, God, because you could use anybody or anything, uh, but you chose to use us and you've given us a platform to be used. So God, we ask that right now that you first forgive us of any sin or anything that hinders us from your righteousness so that we can have your presence here in this time that we share on conversations. We ask also, God, that you would cover us in your blood, that the blood of Jesus would cleanse us and purge us from anything that's not like you, and also give us the ability to be used by you. Let your words be our words, your ways be our ways, and your will be done in this conversation tonight. Let it be exciting, engaging, and also edifying for the things that you've called for it to do. And Lord God, hide us behind the cross. Let us not be seen, but let you be seen and let your will be done. For all these things we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So again, our scripture context for tonight is found in John 13, 34 through 35. And it reads, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this will all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And I'll read that again. I think it's very, very um, key verses here. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. 
By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And I think that as we talk about love, relationships, and interactions, it's a couple things that are key and critical. It's not just about boyfriend, girlfriend, man, woman, spousal relationships where God has given us this commandment. This is the commandment for everybody that we love one another. And as we talk about love and talk about black love or relationship love, God wants us to love others as he has loved us. And that's what also I think removes a lot of the barriers around the challenges that we have in relationships with one another because a lot of times um, we wanna love people the way that we think they should be loved or how we have been loved by other people. But God here through this scripture sets the standard and says, for us to love others as he has loved us. His love is unconditional uh, and he loves us irrespective or regardless of what we look like, the color of our skin, what label society tries to put on us, what our sexual preferences are and all of these other things that kind of cloud the way that we tend to love each other interpersonally or in relationships that we have with other people. So, and again, God says, this is not a request, it's not a suggestion, it's a commandment. And we have to take that very seriously in terms of how we execute that. Um, I, I think God has really been um, pushing forgiveness as a theme uh, in a lot of different relationships and opportunities that um, I've been experiencing over the last couple of weeks. And I think that love is the critical piece in these um, verses are driving what God is saying is the remedy to a lot of the problems that are occurring in, in some of these relationship challenges. So just wanted to frame that in terms of how we talk about love and relationships and black love, because we tend to, as humans, put conditions on what God says spiritually we shouldn't. And I think we have to be careful about being obedient to God's word and how we um, move forward in fulfilling this commandment. So we had a couple weeks ago um, put just some thoughts and questions out there that we were going to play off of each other, but also, um, you know, engage you tonight. And hello, everybody that's um, joined the watch party and on Instagram and also on Facebook. Good evening, everybody. Um, but just wanted to, you know, start the Black Love conversation um, around just a couple things that um, you may not know about us and that we um, might be entertaining around each other, just around, you know, how we came together, relationship stuff that goes on that might um, help us to be better at what we do. So I'll let you go first. What? A question? Mm -hmm. What made you say yes? In fact, you didn't ask me a question, so I'm asking you now. No, no, that's that's for you. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> you didn't say it, so. All right, so so what made me say yes? Um, well, you didn't ask me. I asked you, so. But what um, made you ask me? What? Well, so let me flip the question around. Okay, so what made me ask you? I think um, during the, not I think I know during the time when we were dating or after we had started dating, it was um. A number of things that made me ask the question uh, and it, it was a build-up process that led to me asking the question because I had had the ring for several months before even um, asking you the question but it was your maturity I think was a a major part of that where you were versus other girls or women I had dated at the time your domestic um, um, qualities were very attractive um you know you you had turned into the cook and the you know just those wifely things that um you I would demonstrate always a cook. He yeah just but didn't know it. yeah see she she so once because she <laughs> i live with my parents he assumed she that, tricked me so she that because i didn't know how to cook back at that time i was the one who was doing the cooking and and you know she because of he that, never asked. yielded to my cooking, and I was always cooking, which it wasn't a problem, but um, it was nice to see that you had those domestic skills as well. And, you know, we tend to, we, we spend a lot of time with our parents as well, so all of our 
parents, both of our moms are very good, were very good. My mom were, was, and her mom is a very good cook. So we come from, you know, both sides of the family having good cooks. But, you know, that's how I, my mom taught me how to cook. So I was the cooker in, in the relationship early on. But, you know, I never asked. That's true. And, you know, um, <laughs> once I found out that she could cook, I was like, oh, wow, really? You can, you can throw down too. So it was those you know types of things I know that that's right cuz that um i didn't see in other relationships that i was in that um had led to helping me ask the question and i think spiritually we were starting to grow to a space where you know we were going to church together and learning and growing at the same time and you know just that ability we we had a strong friendship at that time as well that I think that was um, a part of the reason why I asked the question because you want your mate to be your friend. So we started out hanging out and hanging out went to other, you know, led to other things, but um, <laughs> that's what led to asking a question. And, you know, I, I don't regret it, wouldn't regret it at all and wouldn't change any of the, the things that led to it. So what made you say yes? So I said, yes, he's so spiritual. Um, I wouldn't even <laughs> say, I'm not even I don't know what that means, but. It, it was any spiritual qualities. For me, like, I just, out of all the guys that I had ever dated, he was different. Like, he had his own, well, I had guys that had their own place, but it was just a whole different, it was a totally different thing. The way that he carried himself very responsible um i can't really say that church i don't know if that played a big role in it for me i just i don't know i couldn't see myself after being with him i i enjoyed his company i knew it was somebody that i wanted to be with for the rest of my life like even when he got on my nerves or we would argue or whatever because i never forget our first argument i was devastated <laughs> but <laughs> even then like i still wanted to be with him so like it was never like okay i can't, i couldn't see myself not being with him so that's what made me say yes because i just wanted i wanted to be with you and see the, the funny part was we spent so much time together too is like we it, it was interesting because we 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 i was only work. 20 years old too so that's why i don't have right. no extravagant oh you know he was this type of man and no we like that young. was i was not even 21 years old yet. she was so 20. i didn't even know who i was she <laughs> was 20 i was 24 you know and and we were both what what you would call as young done dumb and inexperienced but we spent so much time together that it was just like it was automatic, you know, when, when I got off work, she got off work or whatever. It was, I'm coming to pick you up. We going to the movies, we going to dinner, or we just going to chill at the crib, or we going to hang out at your mom's, we going to hang out at my mom's. Or, you know, it was that type of connection and we were dating, but I think that that's what built towards the, I can't see myself without, without you, you know? And I, I'm, I'm going to put this out there too, because she was a little possessive and she figured that if she didn't have my time somebody else would <laughs> and that's actually well i ain't even gonna tell that that part of the story but that's how we got together um no he the, tricked me nah, I, <laughs> so next question so <laughs> what makes from your perspective me happy from my perspective what makes you happy with me is what I show you appreciation when I'm thoughtful and um, I know a clean house, <laughs> <laughs> a cooked meal. <laughs> um, what else? <sighs> More than that makes me happy. And I mean, okay. it might be well, something that you well, can't say it. say on. <laughs> no, but I I I want to hear what 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 you think makes me happy. I'm telling you, it makes you happy. Um, I just told you when when you're appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> I don't know. Like a number of things make you happy. Well, I think what makes you happy um, are, is when you're spoiled. Um, Here we go. I gotta and, be the. And, and, and nah, baby, you know, this is this is this. We being real, so you know, um, when you're spoiled, and spoiling her is you know. Um, Allowing her time to rest and sleep and, and, but cuddling and also, you know, shopping and making sure that, you know, she is well taken care of those things that most women, um, uh, enjoy. Um, but you know, I know that that makes you happy. And also, you know, she is, um, an introvert. So, you know, with that, a lot of times what makes her happy is being left alone. Um, so, you know, understanding that and and also balancing you know my desire to want to spend time with my wife but also giving her space to be alone uh and also um appreciating that about her even as we raise kids i think that that's an, an important um thing and and excuse me the reason why i ask that question is because a lot of couples don't know what makes their mate happy and i think that that's where a lot of challenges and friction comes in because the I'll, I'll use a latter example as is why i think that that's important to know and if you don't know ask and if you ask be open to what your mate is telling you makes them happy because a lot of times we spend our wills trying to do stuff that we think make them well, happy it goes back to the love languages mm -hmm. we, we love people the way that we want to be loved instead of loving them the way that they want to be right. loved. because and, and it's not a um it's not anything where we're trying to be malicious about it, but it's just a natural thing that you do. You think because this thing it makes feels me good right, to, to me, me or right. makes me happy that it's got to make the other person happy. So when you don't, when you start getting frustrated and your needs are not getting met right. and you're wondering why and the other person is saying, you know, you're not, you're not meeting up to those expectations. And then now you get frustrated <laughs> because it's like, well, I'm doing this, this and this. But that's not what they want. So even though you might be doing all these things, it's not Making what them makes happy. them happy. Right. Or how they need to be loved. Right. And like I was saying, you know, with that latter example, um, you know, the kids. And, and that is um, a major thing that from your um, introvertedness, if you want that time with yourself and just to be alone or just to go get your nails done and not have to worry about taking the kids with you and those types of things, you know, those are things that I know that I need to be engaged in and make sure that, you know, I grab all the kids and we go do something just to free her up to be alone and have her time. And that might be a day. It might be just a couple hours, but um, I know that that's one of the things that helps you maintain that, you know, mental peace and sanity. Um, and, you know, same thing for me. Um, there are times when it's just like, you know, yeah, as much as I am an extrovert, and you know, love being around people, love being around my family. There are moments when I it, I just need to be by myself <laughs> and have you know, and that, that's far and few in between. But those are times, yeah, you know, I, a I think more you know, frequent. hers is a little more <laughs> frequent. Um, but you know, we I think we all need that. And it, like Ebony said, I think it's not just a love language, but it's also paying attention and keeping your finger on the pulse of your relationship because when those infrequent moments might happen for me, it would be my prayer that she would say, hmm, you know, something's not, not right. right or something's not the way that it normally is. And maybe I should cater to that right now and just ask, you know, hey, do you need some time to yourself? Or, you know what, I'm gonna take the kids to go get some ice cream and, you know, you just chill or, you know, why don't you go shoot some pool outside of the house, you know, or why don't you connect with one of your homeboy, you know, but, having that conversation is very valuable because it shows interest it shows that you are aware and it shows that you know we're not just being passive to uh, uh the the normal everyday schedule and routine you know sometimes you have to intentionally break the routine on behalf of your mm -hmm. mate so that you know again it helps to fuel that I'm aware of what makes you happy, if well, like that makes said, sense. Like even him, he's more of a extrovert. Like he likes to hang out, talk to people, 
and a lot of times I just go just because that's what makes him happy <laughs> I don't necessarily want to be there but I enjoy spending time with him so I make the best of it right and you know what's what's funny and um for for years that's always been the dynamic you know in terms of my career and um uh interactions and leadership and in church and other things and it's caused her to have to step out of her comfort zone mm -hmm. because of trying to support what makes me happy and you know and it's also a part of what i have to do in the roles that i'm in um so for me it's generic but for her again being conscious and aware of that i know that that's a struggle and a challenge and you know having networking events where i got four or five hundred people in a room and i'm trying to get around and navigate to everybody but also making sure that while she's sitting in the corner i'm giving her the attention that she needs so that she's not mad at me because i was giving all these 400 and something plus other people more attention than i paid to her making sure she ate and you know all of those but that sensitivity is so critical because those are the things that tend to drive wedges in relationships when we're not aware or paying attention. So the next question. So what do I do that makes you happy? Um, no. Yeah. Um, no, I'm sorry. What was the... Uh, um, no, I asked, we asked that question. Um, what do you avoid doing because it frustrates me? <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things I just, I try to avoid doing because it frustrates him <laughs> is don't when, talk about the curate. Don't, no, don't, uh, I'm not, I was, <laughs> that's the first thing that came to my mind, but I'm going to leave that alone because we talked about that curate a lot. <laughs> But yeah, that's one. I try to make sure I take the pot out the Keurig. <laughs> the other thing, <laughs> as of yesterday, well, that's something else was added to the list. Uh, somehow I've been leaving the television on. <laughs> so today oh, I made a conscious effort to make sure I went and turned off the television. <laughs> so another thing is, <laughs> I try to, no seriously, when he is reprimanding our children especially with the boys i try i try to just be quiet sometimes i even have to remove myself that's for me that's one of the biggest things like is just trying to not say anything no so do you think that when you say things while i'm reprimanding them that that frustrates me it can be frustrating. I mean, I don't. I think if I came to you, you know, we can have conversations, just me and you outside of. Mm -hmm. But even I, sometimes, I, I think you get, you still get frustrated. Sometimes you, you might, you ain't going to admit that, but sometimes you still get frustrated. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, I, I do, and I, I mean, I, I own it because you know, a lot of times, if, excuse me, I'm, I'm reprimanding them or chastising them you know either of us i think we feel justified in what we're doing and to even you know and, and this is something i think the lord continues to work on me with um even in the discussion it's like it, for me it's always been if i'm at that point where i have to reprimand or chastise them it's nothing to talk about <laughs> you know or there's no debate but what i've Try and that's to, what frustrates but, me. But right, no, no, and and respectfully, and and I, what what I was just gonna really say is, I have grown or am growing around having that conversation and not being defensive about it, you know, because you might be wanting to discuss it from a help me understand perspective, right? But my mind is, it's already final, you know, and it's already done. So what are we talking about it for? Or, you know. Period. That's his mind. Period. T <laughs> is not, you know, but no, and, and, and like I said, God said continues. What he said. God continues to work on me with that because that is, you know, for me, it takes a lot to get to chastisement. It takes a lot to get to to reprimand. And I hate having to repeat things that we've already gone over because then that means that either you didn't get it 
or you being disrespectful about it or you just didn't care. So when I have to now speak to that or deal with it, it's like, okay, that's it. But then when you're like, all right, well, can we, you know, be a little bit lighter or, you know, why, how did you get to that? Or you're, you're harder on him than you are with her, and, you know, that those types of things. It's like, there's a reason for that, you know, and, and hopefully, you know, again, as we continue to grow in relationship that we both have that understanding around, oh, I, you know, I, I get it. Even though that might not have been my approach, but I get it, you know, and the same thing happens with you and our daughter, you know, it's like, you know, that's daddy's girl, but you know, it's like, Taylor, you, it's like, whoa, wait a minute, it wasn't that deep, and then she's crying, and you know, it's like, oh boy. Taylor always uh, crying. Oh yeah, she, she'll break out in, in a cry fit, um, just because I asked her why she didn't close the refrigerator, so it's like, okay, but you know, but these are, again, um, I think Communicate, and I say this um, all the time, I think communi clear communication mitigates confusion, right? And, and I think that to be able to have that conversation, but understand your mate in a relationship and what ticks them off, you know, what turns them on and those types of things help in that because there's a lot of verbal and nonverbal communication that is a blessing that you as a couple often um, omit. Or, or, or don't pay attention to and you know those cues and those signs and, and those things particularly when you're raising kids um, you know you can help them it's like hey you are leading up to that point where mommy or daddy is getting ready to have to say something to you and let me help you out yeah. so that then we don't have to have that conversation on the back end so the other thing that I know frustrates you and this is something that I'm still <laughs> I still struggle with because I don't know it's just <laughs> he gets frustrated when I shut down and I I still I admit I still struggle with that I know that I've gotten better but sometimes it just in order for me to not say certain things I like instead I do the opposite because I want to if I say it sometimes I want to say it in a way that's not so pleasing yeah so then my alternative to that is to shut down or sometimes i might even want to have the conversation but i don't feel like it turning into a blow up so i'll shut down instead and that's not the right thing to do either right no i i you know and, and rightfully so i mean because again it, it goes back to that communication piece and how we have grown i mean we've grown significantly we still have communication challenges as a couple um because of things like that when <laughs> yes we, niecy no niecy um no team leo um i was getting ready to say three letters and the middle one is oh but i'm not gonna say that for the um sake of the video um but i'm gonna inbox you and text you um no but it it hurts the ability for the relationship to grow when we can't communicate mm -hmm. and it hurts time and and the um the urgency around relationships because you know one of the things that with tragedy and all of what's going on you know i am very adamant about monopolizing time and you know even more so over the recent months and kobe's death and all these other things that have been going on you know life is short and, you know, really not taking advantage of that, you know, oh, yeah, she'll be home or he'll be home, you know, type of mindset that we have. And anything can happen when you walk out the door. But being appreciative of one another, being appreciative of time and, you know, saying I love you and, and different things that, you know, again, culturally, we just don't do. Um, and, and taking for granted the person, you know, don't post all this stuff on Facebook when I'm dead and gone about how much you love me and different, you know, demonstrate that while I'm here and, and, and demonstrate that so that there's no question about whether or not we had that type of relationship. But when you shut down, you leave room for the devil to have space in that space. And then that creates other issues that makes your relationship vulnerable. So, you know, again, and, and we've been even talking about, 
just some family challenges and issues and things around, you know, have that critical conversation that you've been struggling with having for a long time. Um, because that's love. That's what God tells us to do. You know, you have an art with somebody, you know, you go to them and you, you present it. If they don't receive it, then, you know, you, there's a process that the Lord instructs us to go, go through, but that's what love does, you know, because love says, I'm not taking one moment for granted. And even though this thing has made me shut down, let me pray and process and do the right thing coming out of this so that I'm doing what God told me to do. Even though it might not feel like what I'm, I want to do because my flesh mm -hmm. is weak, but I'm going to do this the way that God told me to do it. And I, I know that if I do it God's way, he'll fix me and he'll fix it. And if he doesn't fix it, I know that he is using me to learn something from the way that it is right now. And just in his timing, it's going to be different. So, so question for you. So what do I avoid doing because it frustrates you? Um, so sometimes I will delay um, in saying something that I know should be said because I don't want to get that shut down. Um, or I know the reaction that I'm going to get, so I'll not say anything and I'll be frustrated or hold in my frustration about whatever it is um, because I don't want to disrupt my spirit or her spirit for the day and, and or, you know, whatever the challenge is. So um, I know for a fact that I, I, I do that too often, but then again, it's, you know, is that the right thing to do? And, and is that what God would have me to do? So just, again, being more mature about um, having that critical conversation, no matter what the outcome is going to be, and trusting God to deal with the consequence or the outcome um, is what I'm trying to do more and do better. Um, but that's like really the, um, the one thing that I think that I avoid doing um, um, because it frustrates you. But other than that, you know, I, I really don't try to avoid things because again, as a, from a spiritual context, I know that there are things that we have to address so that we can grow as a couple. And it's not so much as, um, you know, avoiding things, um, um, because they'll frustrate or piss you off, but it's making that decision. Is this the right time to have that conversation? Or, you know, trusting God to give me the words or, you know, create the atmosphere for us to deal with whatever needs to be dealt with because it benefits both of us. And, you know, that's another thing I think that takes the selfishness out of avoiding certain things um, just because it frustrates the other person. It's very selfish to do that, you know, and 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 not even I, I didn't even think about that when we were putting those questions together. But yeah, there's a lot of selfishness in that because it's like I'm going to do what I think is best for me versus what's best for us by avoiding this thing because I don't want to make him mad or I don't want to make her mad. But what about like the little like quirks and stuff, like not even just communication piece of it? What about things like that? Do you avoid any of those types of things? No, because like I said, you know, for me, and, and th th you know this is how I, I, I function as a person. I try to <clears throat> deal with it, you know, f quickly and, and swift and, and right there, you know, just like the TV thing or whatever, you know, the, the little things like that. Because why, um, you know, why delay or avoid talking about that because, you know, it's just going to happen again. Or, you know, or if you don't want it to happen again, talk about it right then and there so that, you know, you address it. So, no, I don't, I don't, I try not the little quirky things to avoid specifically, you know, for that reason. And try to deal with that kind of stuff in the moment. So, next question. Um, what is it, what is that thing that I do that you just adore if there is a thing or if there's more than one what are they well the one it's a lot it's a quite a it's a few things the one thing that I really adore is um just the the type of man that he is the godly man that he is I really truly do adore that I mean, no, he's not perfect, 
but I'm um, not. No, I'm just joking. No, no, he's <laughs> nah, serious. Far from no. <laughs> far from um, perfect. But I love. I mean, just oh, how you always try to take everything back to uh, from a spiritual perspective. Um, that I really do adore. I do. Um, and how it's not just a talk, but you live it. Um, the other thing is how you take care of your family. I, I do. I adore that. Um, I adore how you pay attention to me. Like, if I say certain things and I could just be talking, not really asking, and then... It happens. That's a setup too, y'all. It's so not, different. cause sometimes I really am. Mm -hmm. just... <laughs> She's like, oh, I sure well, could maybe use it's the a setup up a little bit. <laughs> My shoes don't fit, or <laughs> this dress got a little tight. Yeah. Well, it's true. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's a setup. <laughs> but, yeah, but okay. <laughs> So yeah, that's just a few things. No, for for me, I think it's it's similar. You know, um, one I I adore the fact and and I really appreciate you know your spiritual support of you know the the godliness that I try to live um, daily because that that's a challenge. Um, and it's funny, me and Kamari were just texting back and forth before this about um, the the dynamic and power. Um, around how different that episode or, or that series would have been if Tasha would have supported Ghost, right? Um, and his dream and passion to go clean and, you know, her vision of him versus his vision of him, they just clash. And I think that I adore the fact that you support me in whatever state that I'm in, but even more so. And I always make reference of, of one thing that you said that just like, you know, really crystallized, um, you have in my back and it was i will follow you as long as you follow christ and that you know to me i adore because you know and i can't speak numbers to women that are out there because i'm not dating other women but you know i don't know if any other woman that i would have dated or been dating um supports me in that spiritual space and i think that that's more that's so that's so critical um, and, you know, I think it, it, it empowers men when they have a woman that can support them, not just on my entrepreneurial um, pursuits, but where it really matters, you know, and spiritually, you know, I know I have a wife that prays for me. I know I have a wife that believes in the same things that I believe in. I know that I have a wife that supports my spiritual values and my spiritual leadership and the things that I do to serve God first. You know, and because of that, that's where the, all of those other blessings come from. So she supports me in that space, but also in, you know, my role as the CEO of the organization that I run, um, my <clears throat> fathering and parenting and stewardship over our household. You know, those things I adore because, again, without it, it leaves room in the relationship for challenges and vulnerabilities and you know, when, when other women pay you that compliment or you look nice, you smell good or whatever, you know, it gets a different type of response or reaction triggered in your mind when you don't get that at home. Um, so, you know, I adore that level of support that comes from you um, as well, you know, and I adore when you cater to me, you know, when you pay attention and are attentive to the things that we talked about earlier in, 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 in this um, conversation. You know, because that's important, you know, as I move so fast and I'm doing so much and, you know, I'm always trying to make sure that everybody else is taken care of to the point where it's sometimes, you know, you have to ask, well, who's taking care of the caregiver? And, you know, to have a wife that's attentive to, you know, the things that are important to me, things that I like and or things that make <clears throat> me happy and being able to, you know, really... Um, understand my cues, you know, and, and check in, you know, it, it just, it, it melts my heart when I get that message or that text to say, hey, you all right? You know, you need anything? You cool? 
um, you know, that means a lot. That that gives you more mileage than, you know, having to worry about spending a million dollars on me for a gift for, you know, for a, a celebratory thing. Um, but those are the things that matter and get more mileage, you know, and when you talk about things that you adore about your mate, those things are, are, are what matters. Um, because you can buy me a thing and that thing doesn't have any impact beyond when the newness wears off, you know, but the things that you do on a daily basis, you know, and, and, and really catering um, to make sure that I'm good and I'm cool and I'm fed and, you know, the, the house is clean and, you know, those things. I, I adore that. You know, I appreciate that. Um, next question is, what is the thing that you admire the most about me? And you may have already kind of sent me a similar me. question. I mean, I would say the same thing. Um, again, the man of God that you are. And I, again, I think, you know, not over prioritizing the spiritual component, but that's so critical for me <clears throat> um, because the world and society um, wants you to think that it's corny to serve God, you know, and that I think um, goes to what the Bible says about being unequally yoked, you know, and a lot of times when in your relationship dynamic, um, particularly in black culture, you know, it is an emasculating thing. Um, where, you know, one person might be more spiritual and is 90% of the time the woman who's more spiritual than a man. So, you know, when a man makes his stake to be flat-footed about his spirituality, it's critical to have a woman that got your back um, because those fiery darts are going to come against your relationship but then against you as the head of the household and the family um, and attack you in ways that if you don't have that support, um, you know, it, it makes it difficult to be the man of God or the woman of God that God has called you to be. So I think, you know, if, if I had to prioritize the thing that I most admire, it would be that um, as well. What's your favorite thing to do with me? Well, um... Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> there's a number of Outside that, of the bedroom. No, I wasn't even going to go there. I mean, everybody know we got three kids and, you know, um, that's a um, blessing from God to be able to enjoy that recreational activity um, that uh, is the um, uh, number one line of communication between married people. But no, um, I think um, just hanging out I'm, and, and I it doesn't have to be nothing like you know we don't have to go anywhere or do anything and it's great when we do but i, I think just hanging out because i think we enjoy each other's company that much you know and we don't and you know to each is his own or her own in terms of how you spend time with <clears throat> your your mate and your relationship but we can be around each other in the same room having a glass of wine and she on her phone playing solitaire or I'm on my phone, you know, on social media or whatever. But just the simple fact that we're around each other, yeah. um, because I move so much, because I'm always on the go and ripping and running and doing stuff, you know, whether it's for the church or for our household or for the kids or, you know, whatever it is, just having that us time, you know, um, and, and um, being around each other is my favorite thing to do um, with you. And then, you know, when we are um, uninterrupted and, and left alone by the little uh, crumb snatchers, you know, it's, it's always good. And, you know, I'll say, you know, we, we shouldn't have to be apologetic or, or shy about that. You know, sex is very important in, in the relationship. And, you know, for me, I, I seven days a week, 24 hours a day um if i didn't First have to of all, <laughs> you getting old we both get hey old. but guess what <laughs> ain't nobody having sex seven days a week 24 but, hours a day that ain't yeah. getting old for me so you, <laughs> you know, know even what? no matter how as long as the lord no. say it work we gonna work Let's it just praise his holy name <laughs> um but <laughs> so for you <laughs> what's your favorite thing to do with me the same thing really i mean it doesn't really matter to me what we're doing i think the one thing though um and you kind of touched on it is um that i miss more being here in ohio because we don't have that support system is that uh one-on-one -on -one time mm -hmm. like i i really do miss that and i enjoy that 
you know, more than anything. But again, it doesn't even have to be deep. It doesn't matter what we're doing. I just enjoy your company. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, if I was a flavor, oh God, what flavor I would I these be? Questions ahead of time. <laughs> Black and mild. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody want to talk about this. your smoking days. I said flavor, not not type. Of, oh Lord, y'all pray for us because we still are not fully delivered in all areas, and you can tell by the responses to some of these questions where some of our sinful struggles are. So, flavor. I had to think about that. I don't know. Do you have an answer? I, I really didn't give it any thought. I think. Um, you, yes, Nisi. You, you, <laughs> see, but that's that's my point. The chocolate black and mild. See, and again, you 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 can see where our carnal um, struggles still exist um, in terms of uh, things that we um, have not yet been fully delivered from. <laughs> um, hmm. For me, I think a flavor, if you were a flavor, and it would probably be caramel, even though I don't like... Um, Why? Because um, when I think about... Um, so, Ebony has, from a physique perspective, um, matured. Oh, Jesus. Um, and, and, so you're trying and, to say and, I'm stretchy like caramel? <laughs> no, no, in a very nice way for my palate. So, um, and again, um, I it ain't it ain't about nobody else. It's about what I like. Um, but um, no, I'm because of caramel's texture and, um, you know, how, and I'm a chocolate fan. So I would say dark chocolate, but she's not, be, she's not dark chocolate. He didn't um, used to be a chocolate fan. Oh, I, I. I'm talking about no. flavor. Okay. I'm not talking, I'm about talking about complexion about... of right, females that I've dated. But anyway, um, <laughs> see, um, Lord, please help us. Um, but no, I think from a, a flavor perspective, it would be probably dark chocolate with caramel in the middle. Because, you know, you like that little surprise when you bite into it and it got that nice little smooth taste to it. So... Um, for me, that that would be be my my flavor. Okay. So, what would be yours? I don't know. I told you, but you don't like it. <laughs> well, you trying to relate my flavor to your smoke, your your uh the 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 weed. Um, I didn't say. Yaki, I said black and mild. Black I didn't and say but that's had, a blunt. I ain't say that. I didn't say that it had anything, anything in, in it. Mm -hmm. I did not say that. Well, it's only right if you put something in it well, that, you know, that's, so, I mean, from where we come from, you well, know. That's so. not what I was saying. Okay. okay. Amen. Praise yeah. God. So, <laughs> if I was a flavor, I would be, what What did you say? The um, I said black and mild. Black and, black and mild. Okay. Nisi said the chocolate one. <laughs> See, but Nisi still <laughs> needs to be delivered too. We're going to have a prayer call after this with you, um, Skeeter. So, um What's the next question? So, oh, well, um, actually, that was the last question. But um, what questions do you guys have for us, if any? I mean, I know um, Kamari and I were talking about um, power. And, you know, really what he and I were sharing back and forth. And, and it was my, my thought that that relationship would have turned out totally different if Tasha would have supported Ghost, you know, and, and his vision to become a um, different man than what society and even she wanted him to become, you know, which was the biggest drug dealer in, in New York City. Um, and, and he wanted to be this clean guy and get away from the life and own businesses and, you know, improve communities and different things. And that wasn't what she wanted for him. And not you know, justifying what played out in, in the um, <clears throat> series with him cheating or going after the woman that he um, thought would support him. 
Um, but that's the reality that happens all, all over, you know, and I, I, I really think that that's what turned him off from her. Yeah. The yeah. lack of support. Yeah. And, and what Kamari was asking us to talk about was how critical do we think that is? So, you know, that, it's very critical to be supportive of your mate. And I mean, not even just a man, but a, a, a woman to a man, but also a man to a woman. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And you know, it's I, I agree. I mean, I think um um we can't lose sight of that. It's not a gender thing. Um what did su support uh, support is mutual. What about what she would have become had if he had met, met if he hadn't met Tasha or um uh uh Angie. If I he, think she meant if if she if he had and met Tasha, what Tasha would have become. I think that's what she meant. Is that what you meant, Shia? Yeah, help just want to make sure we understand. Because, the and, and okay, so I think that's what you're saying. And I'm just because I think that's what you're saying. Um, I'm looking at it from the standpoint that on the other on the flip side of it, it was a lot of sacrifices that she made as well. Because she, he lived the lifestyle he lived, but she was that mom and taking care of home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's real for me. So mm -hmm. I, I understand that. And a lot of times as women, we do sacrifice a lot for the greater good of our... It's not that we don't have dreams and ambitions, but sometimes we look at it like, well, I'm taking care of my family. So I'm going to focus on this so that you can go out and do what you're going to be going to do. So when he changed, switched up, that pro that pro might have scared her. Like, right. okay, well, wait a minute. I sacrificed doing all these things. Maybe I was going to go to school or I was going to do this or I was going to do that. If I had not stopped short the support, what you was going to do. Now you trying to flip the script and change the game up. This is not what I signed up for. <laughs> right. But, you know, it was, and, and she did, you know, and that even played out in a series because, she has sacrificed a singing career, possibly, you know, in a number of things. And, and she played a very commendable, supportive role for him, you know, in him becoming what she thought that he would become as the biggest drug dealer in New York City. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, when you talk about changing the game, his change the game wasn't necessarily a bad thing. You know, it was for a positive thing, but she never wanted that. And she, you know, it was like... No, you're not going to jeopardize the future that we've been building right. with all this money and resources and lifestyle I mean, that I've been and, supporting. And rightfully so. I mean, she was probably a little scared because she didn't know the other side of that. This mm. is what she was used to. And it was like, wait a minute. Now you about to jeopardize this. Like, I, I don't know about all that other stuff. But that's also a lesson, you know, for us, for women and men, because life changes and sometimes you just got to be able to, to roll with it. You know, things are going, you know, might change. I mean, I look at my husband, his, his job, career, it, it changed quite a few times. There were times where he was laid off and I had to just roll with it. You got to be able to, that's where that death till death do us part right. comes in for better or for worse. All that you got to be able to go through the whole process right. yeah and you know you and what you talk about is flexibility you know and being able to adjust yes and, stephanie and i i trust. think you know you you really have to have first a strong faith you know and even and and strong faith doesn't mean you know like a hundred percent on board with everything that god says god says muster seed faith yeah and and even that muster seed god can use that to strengthen your faith and and you have to first trust him but then you got to first then trust each other mm -hmm. um that as we become flexible and as things change that it's going to be all right and that's the thing that a lot of times couples you know um don't survive because you know the, the water heater break and y'all don't have no money to get it fixed and now y'all ready to get a divorce you know yeah. over like little stupid stuff and I say it's stupid, but at the time when you're going through it, it's like magnified on 10 because you don't trust each other. You haven't had these conversations and or you don't have each other's back because there's a lot of selfishness that's involved in that. And it's not so much as somebody changing the game, but it's like that. 
you know, we going. Yes, Shia. And, I was just, I'm so glad you said that because my spirit was leaping because I was getting ready to say that too. Because that's the other thing. It should have been a real conversation right. about the change. And that's where I feel like he kind of dropped the ball. Because right. Because you, you don't, you don't stop because she can't see it. You got to sit well, down and, and he did have conversations, he, he did. but you still got to have patience. You got to help her. He needed to really help her. See and he it. was, he but was he very impatient. he got distracted because Angie. he saw Angela yep. and it was like, she jumped on it right away. Like, okay, because legit. One of the and things... she was supportive right away because she didn't know that other side of him. Right. So then he just forgot all about, okay, well, and let me try to work this out at home. And there was and huge dishonesty there, but home. no, absolutely. And you know, the, the conversation right. piece, they didn't grow together. They didn't grow together. But the other piece was, you know, he had said to her, Tasha, I've been telling you this for a long time, but how were you communicating it to her? You know, and, and, and how were you able to help her? Like Ebony said, patiently join forces with you to be supportive of you. Um, Nisi said, I came in late. <clears throat> you guys have been married since I met y'all. Um, so you're considered seasoned. And um, what advice do you have for couples unmarried who are looking to get married eventually on building and maintaining a healthy relationship. So um, I'll start um, really quickly and just say say this. Um, number one, I don't like to give advice. I will tell you what worked for me or what I would do um, in this situation. And for me, as we talked about tonight, I wouldn't do anything differently than what we did um, to get married because I think even in our mistakes, God used that for right now. Um, so um, what worked for me is having some type of spiritual foundation. Although it has grown and matured over time, having that spiritual foundation of going to church and really trying to be um, spiritually sound as a man first before trying to take on some woman helped me to put some structure in my own life before I try to disrupt somebody else's. Yeah. And I think that, you know, most men, most women get infatuated over the booty and the boobs and all these other things and get caught up in the physical part of it. And we did. And we did, but, but there the was church, still... We still had that spiritual grounding. Spiritual grounding and conviction about, you know, trying to live right, trying to do right. I mean, so much so even when I moved into the house, I was like... You can't leave stuff over here. You can't stay here because we trying to do the right thing, but it's so hard. And God, we can't wait till September 29th, <laughs> you know, but it was just like, you know, again, having that conviction, I think, kept us from going over the edge in a lot of in a lot of ways. What I also say is, you know, what a lot of couples, I think, make mistakes on is not getting spiritual counseling and getting guidance around. Um, some counseling that worked for us. I still, me and my, um, my deacon who, um, um, was our spiritual counselor. We text every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is how tight the relationship is and how important that is because he even <clears> says, <throat> you know, you guys just watching you mature and grow. Um, it's been phenomenal for us to see as a couple where you are now from where you were, you know, 18, almost 19 years right. ago. So and back then I thought it was so stupid. Like I was, <laughs> I really was angry. I hated it. I, I did not look forward to it. We did weekly <laughs> homework assignments yep. and I really was a new Christian. So half of the scriptures I was reading, I didn't understand mm -hmm. anyway. And I'm like, how does this even apply? So, but now looking back, I understand it and I appreciate it. Yeah. And, you know, so and it was a requirement at our church. I don't know if all churches do that, but at our church, unless you went through the premarital counseling, you, you couldn't, couldn't even get married. get married there. And a lot of people went outside of church to get married because they didn't want to have to go through that. And a lot of those marriages are not. That is absolutely know, true. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that that's why, you know, to answer your question, Skeeter, it's like th those things that we see looking back. 18, almost 19 years now, that's why, and not saying that that's the only reason why we were able to survive, but I can see that that's a major reason why we survived yeah. for us, you know, and, and I recommend that. That, I would say also, like, just being friends, to, and don't rush it, like, take, t take your time, get to know each other, yeah. you know, have those meaningful conversations and start doing that now before you get married. 
don't you know try, try to, to be sweep friends afterwards the, under the rug or look things over i think it was a lot of things that we didn't discuss we didn't talk about that i felt like knowing what i know now would have been a conversation but again that was our process our journey and i believe that you know that's why the the having that foundation and that prayer life is important and allowing God to lead you and not looking to any other couple as a model. Mm -hmm. It's okay yep. to admire yep. people, but one of the things that I really hate is that term couple goals. No, mm -hmm. you. my goal is not to be like any other couple. Right. I don't want to be like somebody else. <laughs> right. Although no. I might admire their marriage, their relationship, all that. I don't want to be like them. Right. If you want to model any relationship and we're going to um, rejoin um, Instagram because um, it dropped off because of the hour. But um, if you are going to be like any other person, be like Christ, you know, and I cannot emphasize that enough, you know, be be the model of a human being that Christ has called you to be. Um, and that, that should be your goal. You know, don't have a, or set a goal to be like Jamal and Ebony and or again, be like you know, Ebony or Jamal. There's nothing wrong with admiring. being surrounded by, you know, because you want, you need that community. Christ created us because it's going to be some hard times and it's going to be some things that maybe couples that you surround yourself with went through and they can be there to encourage you. So it's yeah. not like you don't want that input or you don't want that to be surrounded by that community, but never look to somebody else's relationship thinking. And, and I've made that mistake so much in the past. So I know thinking that I want to be, you know, like them. I, why can't we do this like that? Right. You, the other thing is you don't know what they had to go through or what to they're get, currently going right. through to get to where they are. Absolutely. And, you know, and again, there might be some things that Christ may prevent you from going through. You might not have to, your journey is not the same. Right. And, and I think that that's critical, you know, comparison kills like, um, wasn't it Jonathan Reynolds, um, song says and that's so true because you know a comparison limits your ability to be what god called you to be mm -hmm. uh and and don't box your relationship in because god may take you to greater heights Amari, or um you know change uh um things uh, like ebony said in your journey that this couple went through that you don't have to go through so you know be be conscious of that hey uncle dion what's up dion um how can you be like Jesus in a relationship? He was never in a relationship. Jesus is in a relationship with everybody, Kamari, um, because that's what salvation is about. So, um, one, um, Jesus is the bridegroom and the, he's married to the church through salvation. And so we can model him as the husband, if you will, um, to the body of Christ, which is all of us who believe in him as our Lord and Savior. So in that relationship... <clears throat> He was perfect. He sinned not. Um, and he lived in such a way where he felt every emotion that we feel, but he did not sin. And he is the perfect example of how we can model ourselves um, in our daily dying to our flesh and aligning with what he says we ought to do according to the spirit that he's placed in us. So that's the connection that we can be like Jesus in a relationship because so for me, when I pray in every day, you know, I have to admit that God, I am a sinner yeah. um, and I can't do this without you. And again, one of my favorite verses um, is John 15, 5, where um, it says that um, he is the vine. I am the branch. And if he abides in me and I abide in him, I will bear much fruit. And apart from him, I can do nothing. I love that because that really helps to humble me around what I think I can or can't do um, outside of him. So in modeling that, I have to be connected to him to be anything that I am. And I, I saw what you said about the romantic side, but God gave Adam and Eve the ability to go and produce, you know, to um, enjoy sex as a way to be fruitful and multiply. So even though Jesus didn't have a romantic relationship with people, he created that for his creation to enjoy. And he knew that that was good. That's what the Bible says. So that's why, again, we can model to your question, Kamari, ourselves after Jesus, because 
he said, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So everything that's his is ours. And what he created for us to enjoy and have dominion over, as he gave Adam instruction to be dominion over, you know, have dominion over the beasts and the fields and all of that. You know, those are the things that, again, just because Jesus didn't do it, he gave us dominion over what he created as stewards, not owners of the things that he's provided. So thank you for the question because mm -hmm. you just just challenged me to be able to answer that according to, again, God's word, not Jamal's word. But that's what's important that and, and great question, because a lot of people have that struggle. You know, I can't be like Jesus because Jesus didn't X, Y and Z. But when you understand God's word and what he says about us being created in his image, everything that God has is ours. And that's what gives us the confidence to walk in his spirit and do what he's calling us to do outside of our flesh. What does Stephanie say? Everyone wants what others have without knowing what they go through. Yeah, that's true. And we covet that. You know, again, it's like, you know, she she gets something and it's like, oh, you know, that's nice. Um, I want that, you know, or, or I got ebony goals or I, natural hair. You know, I, I want that. You know, but we covet what other people have instead of appreciating what God gave us. And I think that we have to be very careful about that because that blocks our blessing. <clears throat> and, you know, you you get a Bentley. God might want you to have a Rolls Royce, you know, but if I'm coveting your Bentley and, or, you know, just using material things as an example. But if I'm doing that and that's my goal and God says that's not my will, then you limit what God has the ability to do in your life because you're trying to model your relationship or you're trying to model what you do after a person instead of God's will. And that, I think, is more importantly um, the response, you know, go after God's will. And, and even in your relationship, Nisi, you know, when you are um, <laughs> trying to do what God has called you to do in your relationship, seek God's will. And, 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 and that settles it, you know, because I don't want anything but what God wills for me to have, because I don't want to have to deal with the pressure or the consequence of making a decision for something that I wanted. And God says that that's not what I wanted you to have. All right. Well, hopefully and prayerfully, um, you know, this has been a blessing, you know, just to have a little bit of fun around black love. You know, Valentine's Day is coming up and, you know, we as a couple really um, um, and, and I know it's a struggle for us, it, for, for both of us um, to not really focus on and celebrate Valentine's Day. It's not a struggle um, for me. At all. It you know, used to be, but it's really not. It's in, in, in my it's, husband loves me, and I love him, and I don't need one day, day right for him to do buy stuff that I don't need. I just ate a bunch of chocolate. And <laughs> I don't wait for Valentine's Day to do that. So, I mean, I if I want something, then it can happen on the 13th or right. 15th it don't have to happen on the 14th right no and i you know I, and, I, and again i'm not i'm not because i never want people to think that i'm shunning what you do if you mm -hmm. celebrate it that's awesome that's great God i love you. it i love to see everybody enjoying their loved ones or you know what that's great i don't so Thank i'm you, not Anita. judging anybody or saying that you shouldn't do it i'm just talking about us what we and, do and it doesn't right. affect me right no and you know the struggle that I, I mentioned is is the fact that we used to struggle with that, you know, and, and not um, even acknowledging it or, you know, walking by each other on Valentine's Day. And it's just like a regular day. But I think that the struggle has turned into deliverance but I mean, as when well. We were dating, we did, oh, yeah. I mean, like, but that's what I'm saying. Like over the years, yeah. we mature. I mean, it's just similar how to, how we deal with the, the commercialism of Christmas, right. you know, and it's. Um, and again, not knocking what anybody create, else does. For me, it's like it's creating unnecessary stress, pressure and right. stress. I was watching the Tamron <laughs> Hall show today and they were talking about it. And, you know, she had a lot of people in the audience. She even said it and they you know, they were saying that they were so stressed out about it. And men saying they stressed out about it. Women. And I'm like, why, though? Right. Like, why do you feel like you have to do this? It's one thing if, if it's effortless for you and, and it doesn't stress you and it's something that you just love doing, then great. But if it's something that is, is really stressing right. you out and it's like it's about love and we supposed to love every day anyway, then why are you allowing this one day to stress Push you, you out? The edge. And, you know, it's <laughs> funny because, you know, I was having this father son conversation with my 16 year old who wants to buy his little friend he a, a gift. 
And, you know, he was saying to me, you know, dad, you know, um, what, what should I do? And I said, well, you know, first of all, what, 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 what do you want to do? You know, and I said, and why are you doing it? Just so you should understand the reason behind what you're doing. And he says, you know, it's, it, um, we were told um, that it was a, a woman's holiday. <laughs> And I said, "Excuse me." I said, "Well, first of all, there, yeah, his there, little friend, there, 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 there's there's no such thing as a woman's holiday." I said, first of all, if you are going to celebrate Valentine's Day, it should be a lover's holiday." And I said, "You're 16, so let's be clear about being a lover." I said, "You know, you need to be focusing on school, number one." I said, "But if you want to buy your little friend a gift or whatever," I said, "Understand the reason behind." It. I said, "And also, what is she buying you?" Mm -hmm. And I said, because it should be mutual. It should not be one-sided at all. And if it is, that's somebody that you might not want to be <laughs> Kamar with. Come on, said it is a women's it, holiday. But, you know, but that's what society <laughs> is telling everybody, Kamari. You know, and again, as I'm raising my boys to be men, it's like, no, first of all, love is mutual. And if you are so one-sided in a relationship, not. you know, that 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 is not a relationship you need to be in because... And I said, you know, me and your mother, we support each other, you know, and I said, it, and you, we don't celebrate it, you know, I said, so um, if you are choosing to do that and you don't have a job and you're trying to buy <laughs> gifts and things like that, you need to really consider, you know, your approach. And, you know, we had that conversation, <laughs> but... Oh, Mari is crazy. Oh, no, he, he, he is getting pimped out because he went right. So, first we went to Kroger. He was looking at the prices because he got to spend his own money. I'm right. not about to buy some little girl some gift That's from him. That's what I told him. I said, and so, he was looking he's he looking at the prices and he was like, oh, well, maybe we should go to the dollar store. <laughs> I can get more for my, for my money at the dollar store. So, he ended up spending $3.00. You know, he got a card and some candy and a little balloon. And I had already told him, I said, that card better not say nothing about love. And he said, why? I said, do you love her? <laughs> you Are you in love? And he said, well, I don't know. I said, would you die for her? He said, I'd die for anybody. I said, whatever. You wouldn't die for her. So it better not say nothing about love. No, but <laughs> you, you know, better love her like a brother in Christ. That's it. Schooling him on that, you know, and like, like I told him, I said, you know, if, if it's not mutual, um, then that's a relationship that you may not want to be in because no loving relationship is one-sided or imbalanced. And I said, you know, look at your parents as an example, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and what you see us do relative to how we love each other and how we support each other you know there's not an imbalance in how we do that um and just early on you know i said this first of all is going to be the first of probably many relationships that you're going to have right. because you 16 and in high school if it lasts and you don't, even have, this, you don't even have your phone right now right. y'all can't even talk to you, each other you only see her at school a couple hours so you know if it lasts beyond that that's a great thing you know it's a good thing when you know and i was looking at some some couples from college that were college sweethearts and they've been married for you know 20 plus years and that, that's a great thing um but in school in my son that this one probably ain't gonna be the one so yeah. you know just make sure that you're not investing in something that's not going to go anywhere past the summertime. You know, hard. so um, <laughs> you know, it's, that, it's that kind of stuff that, you know, I think that, uh, again, and, and that's why I wanted to really, you know, kind of touch on the Valentine's Day thing before we close. Because I think we overemphasize um, um, uh, specific or commercial parts that drive wedges in between our, our continued relationship. And I think that we got to be careful about that. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, somebody <laughs> might be willing to um, leave a relationship or a marriage because they didn't get what they wanted on Valentine's Day. Come on, Mari said, I don't like her. I don't even know her. I never even saw the girl, but you're right. I don't like her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, 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 we haven't seen a picture of her, no social media stuff or any of that, uh, y'all. So we waiting to see. All um, I know is her name is Reagan and she go to school with him and she supposedly is a senior yeah um anita yeah a absolutely anita said that you know her and her husband um took a break, took a break. from dating on valentine no and, and to you teach know, her children how to date properly again I, I think it's essential um you know to particularly show your children a model and i think that that's another level of consciousness that oftentimes we omit or overlook because we're so consumed with each other that you know we have to also be careful about what we're showing our children because we should be the model of what marriage and in the, the the right relationship looks like you know and 
expose them to what they need to see so that when they start engaging and it's even so much more important now because again my son talking about i got a girlfriend i'm like no you don't have a girlfriend <laughs> that's a title that you have to be responsible you got a girl for that's your friend. you have a girl that's, that's your friend you know that and that's why nisi i said little friend um because that's what <laughs> she is his little friend that ain't your girlfriend unless you able to take care of certain things and be responsible for certain things and you know drive and all these other things that you don't have as a right yet and you're not on your own and you don't have your own budget you still on my payroll and your parents payroll you know those are the things that again when you start putting labels and titles on stuff that comes with responsibility so you know again i think we have to be careful of the messaging that we allow our children to see from us and also adopt um in their own as they mature um path and journey because it's critical and and what we shape is what they become mm -hmm. and you know a lot of times we have to own you know that pimp player um that they become because of what we had allowed them to see and um what was the guy on um um that 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 show was it is that show called black love what show? um the show that we was watching the the series with the couples yeah um he has said that his father um because of how he objectified women taught him how to objectify women in, in a nutshell, you know, and he, he knew dad was married to mom, but when he saw that other woman walk by and he was like, whoo, you know, and those, he said, that thing is what made him think that it was okay to do that. And yeah. he then translated that into his relationship with his wife. And again, I think that I'm ever conscious of that, even with my boys, you know, if there's an attractive girl, I don't make my son like oh, look, you know look at her butt jamal you know or something like, no i don't do that because i don't want him to think that that's okay even though i did it when i was growing up but that's how i was trained and taught too you know that men had multiple women in order to satisfy this you know conquer kind of mentality but as you grow and you mature and you really don't want your children to repeat your mistakes we got to be careful about what we show them and the models that um we set so um, I think we've gone over about 15 minutes, y'all. So um, wanted to uh, really thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, I had fun. Um, you know, again, I wasn't feeling up to doing conversations tonight when I got home. Um, just been a long day, a long week, and the weather was crappy today. And just, you know, my spirit wasn't ready. But I just thank God for always showing up and giving us um, what we need to be a blessing to those whom um, he allows us to touch. So, you know, and again, we had a, a couple weeks break because life has just been crazy um, and crazy busy. But, you know, as God provides opportunity for, the, for us to get in front of you, we will always take advantage of that um, and, and try to be before you. Um, <laughs> Kamari. Kamari, <laughs> Kamari is so crazy. My boy says uh, we should do an episode um on ghost and tasha i mean you know really you, you could break that down and learn a lot about uh relationships do's and don'ts um but you know um i'm i'm, I'm waiting until july until power book comes on and then you know get back in I, i'm y'all y'all check on me um because i don't have no football basketball getting ready to go on all-star break um uh there's there's no power Queen of the South ain't on, um, um, The Shy ain't on, um, Snowfall ain't on, so all my guilty pleasures, I, I guess I just got to spend some time with Ebony. So um, <laughs> y'all pray for me, and, and then I'm going to be subjected to Real Housewives of Atlanta because oh, and all this other stuff. Don't even act like and that's all I watch. I, okay, no, not just um, Real I like Housewives. I like documentaries. So um, Ayala Fix My no, Life. and that's not um, you want, of course what, you're gonna pick all them shows. What, what, I love documentaries. Every everything ratchet now I'm gonna be subjected to because I'm giving over the remote, y'all. So y'all pray for me. Maybe I'll I'll sleep a lot and I'll catch up on my sleep while she watches TV. But y'all y'all keep us in prayer. But you're not avoiding <laughs> doing what's frustrating me right now. <laughs> But no, you guys have been a blessing and thank you all for uh, joining us tonight. And uh, again, you have topics you want us to discuss other than um, uh, power, um, <laughs> Kamari and Tasha and ghost relationship. But if it's th things that you want us to uh, pray about, talk about, inbox us, talk to us, let us know. And we'll continue to pray as well about things that we can bring before you that the Lord uh, lays on our heart to share. 
and we look forward to getting back in front of y'all soon. So um, with that, we're going to close out in prayer. And again, thank y'all Instagram. Thank y'all Facebook for joining us tonight. And we're looking forward to our next one. But let us close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for showing up. We thank you, God, for um, showing the world that um, it's okay to have a sense of humor. It's okay to be real. It's okay to be transparent. It's okay to be who you've shaped us to be and not want to be like anybody else other than Christ. Um, we just thank you, Lord, for giving us the model and giving us the resources and giving us everything that you created to have dominion over, use, and apply to our lives, Lord. And you said in your word that if we delight ourselves in you, that you would give us the desires of our heart, Lord. So we just continue to thank you for the opportunity to delight ourselves in you, Lord God. And Give us the spiritual growth and maturity, Lord, so that we don't want anything but what you will, Lord God, and, and not covet other relationships or covet other people or what they have materially or financially or how they live their lives, Lord God, but allow us to walk our own path and our own journey with you according to your will and be satisfied and content with that, Lord God, and please, so that, Lord God, we are the vessels that you called us to be and that we use our experiences to be a blessing to others that are coming behind us, Lord God. Break generational curses, Lord God. Restore families. Create forgiveness in us, Lord God, so that our prayers and blessings aren't hindered as a result of holding on to unforgiveness, Lord God. So we just thank you, God, for just being the awesome, awesome, amazing God that you are. Cannot say enough about how much we love you, Lord God. We give your name the highest praise. And we say hallelujah, Lord, because we claim any victory over sickness, illness, death, and or anything, Lord God, that is causing us to feel hurt, harm, or causing fracture in our relationship, Lord God. Let us follow the command of John 13, 34, and 35, that we love one another so that we can show folks who you are by the way that we love one another. In all these things we pray and ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks. Love y'all. Talk to y'all soon. And again, if you missed it, go back and watch it. We'll post it on YouTube. We'll post it on Facebook and put it on our, our pages. And it should also show up on our Instagram feeds and our stories. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tonight. Love y'all. See y'all next time.